Hey folks, John Schneider here, and I thought I would just <coughs> drop in to answer your questions about the Dukes of Hazard. So, here it is, the 10 most asked questions about the Dukes of Hazard. And, of course, my answers. Why? Why do I know? Because I was there. Alright, let's get rid of this hat. It was blocking my eyes. Number one, was there more than one General Lee? <laughs> yes, of course there was. Every time we jumped the car, I had so many people saying they watched the suspension just kind of crunch out from under the car. Well, every time we jumped the General Lee, it had to be towed away, with a few exceptions. But almost every time we jumped the car, he, I call him he, was totaled. We did 147 shows. We did two jumps per episode. Okay, so 147, 280, 94. That's 294 General Lees minimum. Now I know some of you are going to say, well you did the miniatures for a while. So let's take, let's take the miniatures out of that. Say we did uh, 294, 200, let's, let's put that at 275. 275 just for the sake of argument. So at the very minimum, 275 General Lees. Now that does not count the times where we had the general on a barge. I remember we were doing one thing out at Lake Sherwood. We had the General Lee on a barge. It happened to be the one that I had just purchased and sold to Warner Brothers. It was a beautiful 440 car. But when you put uh, a car that heavy on a barge, the weight distribution is very odd. It was easier to get it on there than it was to get off. Every time the car started getting toward the front of the barge, it would go to sink the back would come up. So eventually, sadly, after uh, about six hours of the transportation department trying to get that car off the barge, they let it go into the lake. So that car was never jumped and yet that car was totaled. So I'm going to say just for the sake of argument, minimum, without question, 280 General Lees. Now I've given the answer before as 329, but I did not include the miniature cars. So, 280 at least General Lees destroyed. Number two, speaking of the General Lee, the number two question is always what size motor did the General Lee have in it? Well, as we've already discussed, we had 280 General Lees. So that means we had 318s, we had 340s, we had 340 Magnums, and we had 440s. Never ever did I ever see a Hemi car while we were shooting Dukes. Also, I never saw a stick shift car. All of them were the automatics that you see, uh, you see in the show. I never saw a stick shift. But you hear a stick shift. Why is that? The sound designers put the sound in afterwards. My understanding when we did the show that all the sounds of the General Lee were actually taken from a sound effects company and they were the same ones used in the 68 Charger in a movie called Bullet. That's what Dukes of Hazard and Bullet have in common. Okay, number three. Where did the Dixie Horn come from? Well, it's absolutely true. We were filming high octane. I know that because I was wearing my brown uh, corduroy suit filming high octane and someone went by the boar's nest in an El Camino and blew the horn and the horn went <whistles> our executive producer Paul Picard who happened to be on the set that day grabbed a teamster jumped into a van and chased after that guy and bought that horn because Paul decided that moment that that horn needed to be in that car by the way, this roof that I have here at Miss Shirley's, that was my dad's. I got that from my dad back in 1980. So this is from one of the first General Lees we ever jumped. And the values A's used to cut the tops of them off and try to salvage what they could. So I got that and gave it to my dad back in 1980. So that's where the Dixie Horn came from. If you want one, I believe the J.C. Whitney catalog is still the only place where you can find your very own Dixie Horn. All right, number four. Did I actually jump the General Lee? Well, the answer to that, sadly, during the Dukes of Hazard, is no. 
I did not jump the General Lee. If you can imagine, it's a pretty dangerous thing to do. So if you've got 200 people that are working on a television show and Bo goes out and jumps the General Lee and hurts himself, you've got 200 people out of work. So it wasn't so much that, that uh, they cared about me, although I wish, I wish they did. But I understand, we make movies now, I understand too. The production company could not possibly afford to lose any of the actors during the filming of the show. So we were kept as safe as possible. Stuntmen, and we had many wonderful, wonderful stuntmen and women on the Dukes of Hazard. they're the ones that jumped the car. Until we did the movie Christmas Cars. In fact, check this out. This is me actually jumping the General Lee in the movie Christmas Cars. Hang on, General. I only did that because I could. Heck, they used to do it all the time. Who knows? I might even do it again. Ah Ain't that ah. slick? That's a little different. Ha! I finally did it. 59 years old, and I finally jumped the General Lee. I got in it when I was 18. Mm-hmm. Okay, number five. What were Boss Hogg and Roscoe really like? James Best, Sorrel Book. Well, I tell you, number one, they were best of friends. Wonderful, wonderful people. Sorrel was very, very quiet, and you would find him doing the crossword puzzle, uh, actually in the New York Times, or you could find him doing the crossword puzzle in the TV Guide. If we happened to be in it that week, Sorrel would do the crossword puzzle in one of the TV Guides. He was also an avid woodworker, but you would never see him eating raw liver, by the way, he did eat raw liver. That's a bonus question. He did eat the raw liver, uh, but he didn't dunk it. You would see him reading a book, studying history. I remember one time we had a, a group of people come to tour the set uh, at Warner Brothers there. It was actually called the Burbank Studios at the time. And they were from Japan. And all of a sudden, Soro Book starts speaking Japanese to the entire group. Now, Jimmy thought that Sorrel was making it up. He didn't realize that Sorrel actually spoke Japanese, which was one of the seven, I believe, languages that Sorrel Book actually spoke. Jimmy Best. Jimmy Best was hysterical, but he was also a very serious man. When, when he was not being Roscoe on the set, you'd find him off to the side doing his watercolors. He's a wonderful, he was a wonderful, wonderful painter, had a wonderful sense of, uh, of framing and of composition. So if you have the opportunity, get a hold of one of Jimmy's paintings. Not a silly man at all. He was part of the military police, which is not a goofy job, as you can imagine. So Jimmy Best, wonderful, wonderful actor, incredible actor, but not a goofy man. Not goofy like Roscoe. <laughs> all right, number six. Bam! Where did we shoot the Dukes of Hazard? Well, we started the Dukes of Hazard in Georgia. Little place called Covington, little place called Conyers, little place called Social Circle. We started shooting in October of 1978. That's the year that my life changed. I was 18 years old. Then, after the first five episodes, we moved out to California and shot on what is now the Warner Brothers lot. It was Warner Brothers before we got there, but when we were shooting, it was actually called the Burbank Studios. I'm not quite sure why it wasn't Warner Brothers at that time. But that's when we started filming there. That's when you started seeing mountains in the background. That's when you started seeing all those oak trees. And yes, that is when you started noticing, if you noticed, that the ground behind us was green. But if you freeze frame, which you can do now, you'll see that it was actually painted green with fire retardant because in California, as I'm sure you're aware, there are a lot of fires. So when we were shooting in the summertime especially, it would just be brown behind us. So we actually had to spray the ground with green fire retardant paint so it would look something like Georgia. Number seven, what was the difference between the first five shows and the rest of the shows? Well, when we first started Dukes of Hazard, when we first came on the air, we were on at nine o'clock. Now, a nine o'clock show has an entirely different set of what they used to call standards and practices than an eight o'clock show. 
standards and practices where uh, they, they made sure there was no bad language, they made sure that there were no guns pointed at someone in the same shot. So you'll notice when we were a 9 o'clock show, when we used the bow and arrow, sometimes we would shoot toward people. We'd never hit them, but we would shoot toward people. Uh, sometimes the bad guys would shoot at us and there'd be a little ting, a little uh, bullet hit like on the side of the barn. You'd see that. Once we moved to 8 o'clock, we became a far more family-friendly show. No more mentions like uh, I said to Daisy in, in One Arm Bandits, I said to Catherine, uh, if you weren't my cousin, I'd marry you. And she said that never stopped anybody in this family before. That sort of language and that sort of innuendo ceased to exist when we moved to be an 8 o'clock show. Now, I don't think standards and practices actually exist anymore, which I think is too bad. I think it's one of the reasons why people say, why don't they make shows like Dukes of Hazard anymore? Well, it's because there is no governing body within ABC, CBS, NBC, or any cable channel, as far as I know, that actually regulates the content depending on what time the show is on the air. It used to be called The Family Hour. I don't know what it's called anymore. Okay, number eight. How come I drove the car most of the time? Well, Bo and Luke had aspirations of being a NASCAR team. Now, on a NASCAR team, there's a driver and there's a crew chief. So in our world, and by the way, that's also why the doors were welded shut. A lot of people say, how come the doors are welded shut? General Lee was a NASCAR. All NASCAR doors are welded shut. It's a safety issue. So it was very possible, very probable in that time where people who tried to get into NASCAR would do it in their regular daily driver. So their doors would be welded shut all week. You wouldn't, you wouldn't unweld them so you could go to the store. But that's why I drove, because I was the driver. Luke was the crew chief. Now, as we went on and on, it seemed unfair. So Luke got to drive more. It was great. Also, it was a matter of uh, when second unit, we had two units. So second unit who jumped all the cars and did all the, uh, the stuff outside. Um, it was always nice if they knew that the, the person in the driver's seat was wearing the yellow shirt, right? So you'll notice there are some mistakes in Dukes where Bo will leave town, be driving, and then will cut into the car and Luke will be driving. Well, it became kind of a nightmare. And that's why in Christmas cars, nobody ever changes clothes, ever. Work for Bonanza, work for John Wayne, works for us. Number nine. Will there be a reboot of the Dukes of Hazard? I hope not. I think the closest you're ever going to get is Christmas cars. Uh, when they redid the Dukes of Hazard back in 2005, it came out in 2006, it proved to me and I think to you that the folks involved in it really don't understand the source material. Uh, the way they depicted Uncle Jesse was, I think, an atrocity. Um, and this is not anything against Jessica or Johnny or Sean or Willie uh, or Linda or Bert. Anybody that was in the movie. You know, when you're in a movie, you kind of have to do what you're told. But they made it irreverent. The Dukes of Hazard was a lot of things. But one of them, that it was never, was irreverent. Another, that it was never, was racist of any kind. If ever there was a colorblind television show, ever, it was the Dukes of Hazard. So no, I don't think there's going to be a reboot. If there was, I don't think they'd get it right. Remember that thing they did on ABC Family? Like the beginnings of Dukes of Hazard? It was just, uh, they don't get it. So you want to see a Dukes of Hazard reboot, kind of? Watch Christmas Cars. Christmas Cars is really good, okay? And if it works, then guess what? We'll do birthday cars. We'll do Valentine cars. We'll do anniversary cars. We'll do all kinds of cars. Why? Because I love cars. Okay, number 10. Bam! The question I get asked a whole lot. And here's the answer. No. 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 There was never, before, during, or after, any romantic entanglements between the casts of the Dukes of Hazard whatsoever. No. We are exactly as you see us on the show. We love each other dearly. 
We protect each other with everything we have. We come to each other's defense at every opportunity, and we always have each other's backs. But we never, ever dated. That could not possibly work, right? If you don't believe me, ask Joe Lando. Hey, I'm John Schneider, so delighted to finally answer the top 10 questions of all time about one of the greatest television shows of all time, The Dukes of Hazard. You take care. I'm going to go jump a car. Actually, no, I'm going to go sign more copies of Christmas cards. Watch this. You're going to love this. I'm gone.